Hello, good people. You ever had a tough lesson come to you multiple times in a lifetime? Well, I'm going to tell you about three of mine, or at least the first three, if you know what I'm saying. So I wanted to talk about three lessons that I've learned thus far. I've learned more than three, obviously. <laughs> But these are the three that I've learned sort of at like different points in my life that have really stuck with me and I've seen them happen again and again. And I'm going to share them with you and they may or may not apply or you may not experience them until a different point in your life. But I thought I'd share just in case um, you're either experiencing some of these things or you might be on your way to experiencing some of these things because as they say the universe will give you the same message over and over again until you get it so the first lesson that i had to learn at the tender age of eighth grade which i don't know what age i was 12 13 i don't know 10 11 i don't know you know what i'm talking about eighth grade. It was probably about eighth grade. And it was from my Spanish teacher. And she was talking to our class, but it sort of like came, I don't know, I felt it in my bones. And that was not everyone is going to like you. And I forget why it came up. Um, maybe she was just trying to teach us a lesson. Maybe we'd had a fight. I don't know. I had a very small class. So it's possible that we were I don't know, fighting and something happened. But um, she was like, not everyone's going to like you. And at first I didn't really get it. Um, I probably wasn't, I don't know, in the zone to accept it. But that lesson kept coming back throughout high school, kept coming out throughout college, and even to this day it comes out. And I think the biggest thing, once you accept that aspect of life, you really won't suffer a lot with people who are mean to you, talk about you, do things to stress you out, all that different stuff. Um, you'll really start to understand that like, you know what, not everyone's for me, not everyone's gonna like me, and not only is not everyone gonna like you, you're not gonna like everyone. That's the fact of the matter. So if you don't like everyone, it's a pretty high chance that not everyone likes you. Um, I remember a specific situation in college. Um, I had a group of friends, and they had some friends that wanted to hang out with our group. But at one point, one of my friends told me, she's like, so-and-so doesn't want to come with us because she doesn't like you. And that friend is very blunt. That's a whole nother conversation. But um, I was like, oh, like, did I do something to her? And she's just like, no, like, you're just too much for her. Like, you just, you know, you, you're a lot for her or whatever. Um, and so, <laughs> listen, cut your louses. I was like, okay, I don't have to go. Y'all can go do your thing. I can go do my thing. I do not have to be around when she is around. I do not care. I don't even remember her name now. Even if I were to try and tell you the story with names, I don't remember her name. I remember the friend who told me, but I don't remember that girl's name. And I don't even really remember what she looks like. So, moral of the story is not everyone's gonna like you and I don't really care. But it is just something to know. Um, and you can ask why, like I did but it also doesn't matter. Like if they don't like you, they don't like you and that's it and we're just gonna keep it moving, okay? Next one. Ah, this one was in high school. So I work out. I know you can't tell right now, but I do work out. I've had a trainer for a long time. Um, but in high school we had a gym. We had like a new gym that got built and one of the coaches at one point, his he was telling us, he was like, when you cheat, you only cheat yourself. And that has stuck with me throughout all of my workouts and even like in other things, cause it's true, like cheating, yeah, like you think that you're getting one up on somebody or you think that you're like getting the correct answer or something like that, but you're really only hurting yourself because you're not learning from that situation. Um, or if you are, it's not until too late. And you're also not doing anyone any favors, especially yourself, right? So I think about it a lot when I'm working out, like if I don't do a full push up, right? Like that is only me cheating myself from getting stronger. It doesn't affect my trainer. She can do a full push up. She doesn't need me to like prove to her that I can do one. Um, it's more so like if I don't do that full push up or if I don't do the full exercise, the full burpee, <sighs> I had to take a second there because burpees, woo. Um, 
then I'm only cheating myself. Um, but it applies to so many different things, right? And, you know, cheating never really gets you anywhere. It usually gets found out most of the time, like 99% of the time people find out you're cheating. Um, and yeah, it just applies to so many different situations. So don't cheat youngins. But also if you do, remember you're really only hurting yourself, not anyone else, unless you're in a relationship with someone, but that's a different type of cheating. This is more about like other kinds of cheating. If you cheat on somebody in a relationship, you are also hurting yourself, but you are gonna hurt somebody else, so don't do that either. The last one is you never know who is watching you. I feel like I should insert the, I always feel like somebody's watching me. I have no privacy. Okay, that's my little break interlude for you. Um, you never know who's watching you, especially in, this more so applies to professional situations, um, but also in personal situations. And it relates to another lesson that I'll share at some other point, because that could be its whole own video. Um, but the way in which I've gotten my jobs has pretty much been, and it's not like, you know, coincidence or anything, like I've been in a situation a couple months prior to getting hired at that position, and the person who was gonna hire me saw me working. And they saw me doing a good job, and they were like, I wanna work with that person. And so when the opportunity arose, I didn't know at the time, but when the opportunity arose and I went to go apply for those jobs, they were more likely to choose me because they had seen me working. So an example is when I came back from Japan, I had like six months of like not having a job really because unless you find one and secure one before you leave Japan, it's kind of hard to do job interviews and stuff like that in Japan. So um, back when we thought virtual things were hard, <laughs> um, when I was there. So um, you tend to have to figure out a job once you get back. And so when I got back, I sort of took a little break and I did a thing called Kakehashi. And I, Kakehashi is a program that brings students from high school through, uh, like junior high through high school to the US um, and then to Japan, building bridges all that fun stuff. Um, and so I volunteered to be a group coordinator for a group, my lovely group. Oh, I miss them, they're so great. They're all doing amazing things now. They've all graduated college. Where does the time go? Um, and we had an event at the Japanese consulate here in Chicago. And it was like their final event in Chicago before we went to San Diego. And I was there with them, totally focused on them, making sure that everything was going okay. Like really, you know, checking for them and everything like that was not thinking really about everybody else, although I was still on my like best behavior. And like a couple months later, a position opened up at the consulate, like probably two months later. And I applied for it because I was like, oh my gosh, I'd love to work at the consulate. And I go to interview and whatever, da, 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 and I get the job. And I'm like, oh my gosh. Come to find out, my boss tells me before he leaves to go, because he's in the ministry. So he leaves to go to another country. We have dinner and he goes, you know, I saw you when you were a guide for Kakahashi and I knew at that moment that I wanted to hire you and that I wanted to work with you. So I was really glad that you applied. And I was like, ooh, but like, it's just a reminder. Like, you never know who's in the room. You never know who's watching you. So always do your best, stay ready so you don't have to get ready. That's one of my favorite things to say. That might be a whole nother lesson. I think I'm gonna save that one. Forget I said that. But <laughs> make sure that you're always ready and always prepared because you never know who's in the room. You never know who's watching and that could lead you to your next opportunity. And that's all folks. That's all I got for today. I thought I'd keep it really short and sweet. And I thought that you might like that. So I'll see you next time if you like the video. You know what you gotta do. You gotta like and subscribe.